Now, did I forget to mention in my last video that I am pulling through a refrigerant manifold gauge set. I'm pulling vacuum and I'm pulling vacuum through refrigerant hoses. Those are both two no-nos. You do not do that, at least on a brand new system when commissioning and you want it clean, dry, and tight. I would never do a commissioning with a old set of refrigerant gauges and hoses because they actually interfere and mess up. It gives you so many leak points and just the refrigerant hoses alone cause you to have a, de a decay in your vacuum and not being able to achieve a lower vacuum. But this was an old unit and it was already contaminated and exposed to the atmosphere because of the leaky isopolar copper line set. That's crap of the world. And so I use a set of manifold gauges and I'm using the Micron leak, uh, the Micron gauge that is located where it should not be located for a good system commissioning and that's inside the refrigerant manifold and I'm using it on refrigerant hoses that should not be used because this is just getting a system back up and running. I am not doing a total reboot. I'm not doing compressor replacement. I didn't flush the system. It's not brand new. It's not commissioning. It's getting a system that was contaminated and open to the atmosphere for a year through a leak caused by isopro, uh, isopolar uh, line sets. And they just need it up and running. And I'm cutting out heads as you see in my previous posts on videos on this unit. So I had to make that clear because I don't think I mentioned that. You do not, if you want to do a real good job commissioning, brand new, clean, tight, dry system, you go directly off your vacuum pump source, directly through either copper lines or silicone hose, right to your valve core remover, right into your system. You do not use refrigerant charging lines for pulling deep vacuums. But I thought this was worthy to show you something here about the Micron gauge located in refrigerant manifolds. If you've seen some of my other videos, especially from automotive, you have contamination from other systems and you have thin films of oil inside even your manifold. And that's a contamination, especially when it's wet. And so you've seen in many videos where I have demonstrated, I've turned off the high side, low side, and I draw just vacuum inside the manifold and then isolate off the hoses only holding a vacuum in the manifold where the micron sensor is located. So you have to really understand what we're measuring. All we're measuring is a small volume that's about the size of my pinky finger worth of volume with a little sensor stuck into it and you're only measuring that little tiny location. Now when I show you and I bring it all the way down to 100 microns or less and then I close off all the valves, it shoots all the way up to 600, 700, 800 microns. You go, oh my God, there's a leak. No, it's not a leak, usually. Uh, it's moisture or refrigerant, especially moisture, in that contaminated refrigerant that's a thin, micro-thin film on the walls inside your manifold gauge. But this one has been on overnight. So you now, see right now, I close down the low side, I close down the high side, I'm open on vacuum, so you are reading the vacuum and the decay and its inability to pull a good vacuum because I'm using a refrigerant charging hose and this is what they call their Hillmore charging vacuum hose, which is a piece of shit. Uh, so I'm only capable of going down to 180 microns. And you've seen my demonstrations where I use a silicone, mic uh, a silicone vacuum hose only to the same port on the same set of gauges and I can easily get down to say under 100 microns within 30 seconds, 60 seconds. But if I turned it off right away, it would raise by several hundred RPMs because of just that slight film of contamination. Well, in this situation, here's my limitation, but now I'm gonna show you what happens when you had it on a vacuum pump overnight and you possibly dried out all the contaminants in that thin film of oil that's inside your refrigerant manifold gauges. Let's see what happens. We'll kill off the big vacuum line, big one. We'll kill off the little refrigerant charging line, the little one. And now it'll balance out and it'll go, and you see it actually dropped because there's a, let's say a harmonics and oscillation, a residence of pulsations, and it messes with 
your true readings. That's why when you isolate it off, your readings can go up or your readings could go down. But look at this, look where we're holding. 110 microns. This is the difference between leaving it on vacuum overnight and literally drying out the contaminants from inside your gauges because I have the gauges all closed off now and the micron sensor is located here in the center right inside the middle where that sight glass is in this little section with the volume about my pinky and um, yeah that's it okay I'm gonna about to get over and I got a phone call vibrating in my pocket now on the other phone I'll see you guys later on the next one